Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our sections of Domestify Web 3.0. I'm very glad today um, uh, to speak uh, in this panel with this such uh, ex expert uh, professionals. Um, we have, uh, I will start uh, with uh, uh, the youngest. So I would like to introduce uh, uh, Sir Sir Sirakar. He's CEO of Sonata Software. He's based in Bangalore. It's a listed company. And uh, so I would like to introduce him. He's the most youngest person we have here in the panel today. Sirakar, can you hear me? Uh, th yeah, thank, thank you, David. Thank you for the, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I just uh, want to, uh, just a uh, quick introductions about each of our panelists, and then we go to back to the subject. Got it. Okay. I was thinking, I hope that you didn't take it into the wrong side when I make it, just to say that you are the youngest, but uh, you look <laughs> the youngest. So. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. Did you want me to introduce myself? Yes, or yes, I yes. Right. I thought yes. you did a great job of introducing me. There was nothing more to add about myself. For <laughs> 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 so, okay, then we have uh, uh, Yemu, so is based in Singapore. Yes. Hey, everybody. Uh, it's, it's, it's my great honor to be here. Uh, I've uh, attended um, the past, uh, you know, feel horrific meetings, uh, you, uh, you know, here's Asia and here's this US. And it's my third time here. So it's great to be here, uh, you know, uh, among the honored panelists here. And uh, I am co-founder at ARPA and Bella Protocol. Uh, we are essentially a venture studio specializing in uh, building innovative and, and useful tools for um, the builders and creators of uh, the Web3 era. So ARPA and Bella are the first tools that we build. Uh, ARPA focuses on uh, building an on-chain verifiable random number generator, uh, which empowers NFT and GameFi projects to generate their items in a more fair way and distribute them in a more fair way. One use case would be, you know, if you have a lottery project and you can, you know, uh, through our, our API protocol, you can essentially help uh, uh, to prove your, uh, you know, uh, uh, community uh, that your your lottery is generated in a fair manner. Uh, and that is very important as the stake gets larger uh, in the world of NFT, which we predict is going to be a multi-trillion dollar market. So in, in Bella, we provide liquidity for DeFi projects such as uh, Uniswap V3. We built actually one of the first, uh, if not the first, uh, uh, simulator for Uniswap V3, uh, 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 meaning you know traders can use our uh, tool to backtest their strategies uh, to to get uh, you know juicy yield on uh, yeah, by providing liquidity on Uniswap V3, which I can go into later. But I don't want to uh, waste uh, everybody's time on boring stuff. And besides, we also do some uh, early stage investing. Uh, we have invested in over 30 uh, crypto or, uh, so, you know, uh, uh, what is so-called Web3 projects, including OpenSea. Uh, and, uh, and, and besides, we also run a hedge fund that, that focuses on the option strategies on crypto assets such as Bitcoin and, and, uh, and Ethereum. And we're running this hedge fund with the former global head of risk and valuation from Chris Swiss, CK Zeng. He is, a, uh, he is an awesome partner of ours. And uh, currently, uh, we are raising uh, for our hedge fund. Uh, we hope to close the, uh, our run at uh, $200 million by year end. Yeah, that's go. a brief introduction about us. And then we have Satosh. Satosh, can you just uh, give a brief introduction about yourself? Yeah, thank you, David. So, uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for um, inviting me here. I'm Santosh. Um, I'm the co-founder of Autonomy. Uh, Autonomy is a uh, no-code blockchain infrastructure and a decentralized network for creators. Um, we believe uh, Web, we envision Web3 as uh, Internet of Communities uh, because we think uh, we had an opportunity to build community-owned commons in Web2.0, but we didn't have the infrastructure like blockchain and crypto back then. Um, which can actually power communities to build commons um, and share value between each other using tokens. Um, so we built this, we took a full stack approach when we built autonomy because today in the crypto world, you either see L1, L2 or blockchains, which are built for developers 
or you see dApps built for crypto native users. Uh, we are a full stack infrastructure because we believe um, mainstream users will use crypto native products very differently to how crypto products are being used today. Um, and, and we believe mainstream users are, are uh, used to using Web2 interfaces because Web3 is a backend revolution. Uh, we are quite bullish on Web3 social, uh, social fi creator economy because we think uh, this is what brought ma mass adoption to internet. And we, we envision uh, such a wave happening around this point. Um, and Autonomy built this end-to-end -end infrastructure. So we built a, what does a full stack infrastructure mean? So we have a, a blockchain built using Tendermint consensus and we use Cosmos SDK to talk to different chains. And on top of this chain, we built uh, various crypto protocols. Um, and, and on top of this, we built a no code infrastructure for uh, to abstract the complexity of the entire stack for an end user. So you don't need to know how to code to create value on top of Web3. Uh, that's what we built at Autonomy. Uh, I'm, I'm also the chief ecosystem officer at Xfinite, uh, which is a play to earn uh, streaming platform, uh, which is a very exciting opportunity to introduce a Web3 native business model to content consumption. So today you either see subscription video on demand platforms like uh, Netflix, uh, et cetera, or you see advertising video on demand platforms like YouTube uh, we envision with uh, tokenization, NFTs, uh, we envision uh, something like an earned video on demand, uh, which is possible. We are already seeing this with uh, uh, gaming. There are play to earn games where people are making uh, enough to live, at least in a developing economy. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't know whether that makes sense in a bear market, but I'm sure a business models keep evolving uh, where it will allow people to continue to engage in Web3 and make money. Uh, that's probably a great way to uh, bring mass adoption. So that's like a brief intro about what I do and what I stand for. Very good. Uh, let me go on the, just as a moderator, um, a bit uh, different. So we are focusing at Quanta Capital. We are an advisory uh, boutique focused on venture capital and uh, digital assets. Uh, we look about uh, screening hundreds of uh, startups and uh, uh, these days, we are very busy into uh, Web.0 and the metaverse uh, to understand first and then to see the, which is the technology that is differentiated. Web 3.0 is, uh, as we know, is, is an evolution about the internet base around the principle of decentralization that combine the interactions uh, of the digital experience uh, and also the infrastructures of user ownership and cryptographic guarantees. Now, uh, this technology is powered by blockchains, smart contracts, Oracle crypto wallets, storage networks, and more. So it's a new iteration of the worldwide web uh, that hosts the centralization app that run on blockchain technology. Say that, uh, you know, as, as investors and, and the scouts for investment opportunity, we see that this is very hot topics. Uh, in terms of, uh, just to give an example, uh, a, a, A16Z, the boot 600 million gaming fund to add to Web3 bets. Uh, Web3 media company, Tele Labs, closes 12, 12 million uh, financing. Uh, uh, FTX, Liberty City, lead the 20 million round for a development platform or Dora Axe, just to mention just a few. So certainly Web.0 is a technology that uh, is uh, at the moment one of the most interesting in terms of development and focus for uh, also in terms of uh, investment opportunity. Now, uh, keeping this in mind, uh, there will be, uh, you know, as any project that is new, any development in any sector, at some point in time, uh, there's a question about uh, these sectors, this segment will be regulated. Uh, so that's uh, the main uh, one of the starting questions that we have today. So will Web 3.0 aid policymakers in the search to regulate? I give the floor to Sirakar. I think we have an issue with the audio. Second, I think you're on mute. Yes, on mute. Before, yeah, before. Oh. You're, you're on, on mute again. again. 
There you go. Okay, yeah. So before, yeah, I answer the question on, you know, uh, whether, you know, obviously anything which needs to be regulated will get regulated sooner or later as things become larger and, uh, you know, and start creating some kind of monopolistic uh, situations. But I guess Web 3.0 in its inherent nature is against creating monopolies, at least. So where Web 2.0 was what I think created these big, you know, winner take all businesses and businesses which I think uh, continue to uh, become more successful as they became bigger and bigger. And, you know, I mean, their size and ability to fund and all these kind of things uh, became the uh, the core tenets of these big businesses which have been created on Web 2.0. So, so I'm not too sure uh, whether, you know, obviously if there are these, uh, you know, monopolies or there are other issues which of a sort of security and, you know, those kind of things which come in place, uh, regulation and uh, other things will will come into play. But yeah, another interesting thought I had, you know, when others were talking, like we serve really companies today who are not even in Web 2.0, they're in Web 1.0. So, uh, you know, and who are getting, who are getting disrupted by Web 2.0. <laughs> so, so I see actually now it's an opportunity for these people to to get out of this disruption and create, you know, now these community-based independent businesses because now size doesn't become that much of a big criteria for you to be successful, right? So, so it's like you know, like we say in India, India missed the, you know, uh, uh, the landline revolution we went straight from whatever no phones to mobile phones so mm-hmm. so 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 those people who are still who couldn't who are, who are getting threatened by these 2.0 companies obviously this is a big opportunity to see how they can uh, be more competitive being able to you know offer the product or service or whatever uh, in a more broad based fashion so anyway so that's my a few thoughts to start the conversation yeah sorry Yes. Um, so, I, I mean, I guess I'd like to take a step back and probably offer our, our audiences here um, a, um, a definition of Web 3.0, right? I, I mean, I'm trying to give a, a, a my understanding of, of Web 3.0. I, I mean, obviously, everybody has a different opinion about what Web 3.0 is and what, you know, it can do, uh, including what, you know, metaverse is. I, I think everybody can uh i mean different person can they get you know can can give very different opinions but I, I think you know uh in in contrast to web three uh web uh 1.0 and web uh, web 2.0 which you know uh, i mean in which web 1.0 is read only i uh, why a uh, web 2.0 is read and write uh you can actually interact with the protocols and uh, and applications such as facebook and and google and then the popular Belief is that you know in in the world of uh, Web 3.0, you can actually not only read and write, but you can you, you can also own a fraction of the network, and that representation is uh, is symbolized by you know by what's called a token, right? So by owning a, a piece of token, you own a piece of uh, the the whole network and um, ideally the content on the network. So. Uh, that is what you know. Web three point oh can do uh, in a popular, uh, um, um, you know, re- recognition. So, um, but you know, in nature, uh, right now, a lot of protocols to- uh, you know, has issued tokens. A lot of layer ones has issued tokens, and um, as um, you know, as we have probably already know, um, the the what the win uh, you know there is a winner takes it all you know uh, um, phenomenon as the previous uh, uh, speaker has mentioned right um you know with, with the with giants such as a sixteen z in uh, the world of VC uh, you know amassing a huge amount of capital they're able to you know write a a multi million dollar first check to um, any protocol that invest in making them a behemoth. Uh, in the industry, right, and the likes of Binance and Coinbase and FTX are are basically monopolizing the exchange, uh, you know, um, um, track and direction, right? 
um, ma making very little room for the um, following for, for for the following players. Um, and in my opinion, right, um, there are more, uh, there are much more than just um, um, centralized players such as exchanges or, or or centralized VCs. There are a lot of innovations such as style or or, or algorithm backed stable coins such as uh, you know the very infamous. Luna or UST, which has mm -hmm. essentially gone down to zero from uh, forty billion dollars market cap, and a lot of people has a lot of has lost of uh, you know has lost a lot of their uh, savings, if not being wiped out completely. Right? We have heard tra uh, tragic stories about people committing suicide in Singapore, in South Korea, mm -hmm. and all over the world. Uh, that well, the number is astonishing, right? Probably more than hundred people have um, you know announced. Such uh, bad news on on the internet, such as Reddit, uh, saying that they're going to you know, commit suicide. So um, the instability and um, uh, the the uh, the the stage that uh, you know all these experiments are just experiments right now. They're not mature, right? They're still at its very infancy, and it can be taken advantage of by you know a a a, a small group of innovators or trailblazers or selfish. A uh, group of uh, you know either I mean even hackers or uh, interest-driven uh, institutional uh, institutional players, right? Um, a, a lot of people can be taken can taken uh, advantage of creating uh, social instability and uh, tragic events uh, in in uh, in the society. So that you know has to be regulated, and that will be regulated, right? Um, Jenna Yellen has uh, announced her opinion on uh, the regulation of uh, stablecoin and. You know, it can come come out as soon as uh, uh, year end, and you know the regulators in the U.S. has been trying to understand the implications of uh, the whole crypto revolution and Web 3.0 revolution as early as uh, half a year ago. Right? They have uh, amassed a group of executives from crypto companies, including Brian Brooks and others, uh, and uh, you know uh, at, at the likes of SPF, right? Um, they're trying to understand the implications of it, and they're uh, way ahead of the curve in, in terms of the regulators around the whole world. So, yeah, um, re regulations will happen, and uh, and, uh, and and they're happening, um, and and uh, there will be a lot of implications around that. Uh, that is my overview, and I'm happy to hear um, about your opinions. Satosh, the floor is yours. Thank you. So um, I, I come from a, a different different side of these things, right? So I feel um, there's an opportunity. It's a great opportunity for builders at this point. I think as uh, um, as you mentioned, uh, it's, it's not a great time for a lot of um, people to just come in and trade a lot. I, I'm not a real bullish guy on a trader. I've never been. I've always been a builder. So I come from this perspective all the time. So I feel it's a great opportunity to see uh, in Web2, we never had this opportunity of building community-owned uh, platforms. The, the infrastructure underlying ownership infrastructure was never there. Uh, let's say you build an app application. It, it's kind of uh, ironical, right? So you're building all these businesses, value everything in a digital native way. But however, we still had to go back to a paper form a paper certificate to probably enable ownership of these early small private companies which are coming up. Uh, what what I noticed and how I actually came into crypto, a little bit of background, I moved from uh, venture capital, venture capital tech kind of platforms like F6S, uh, building communities around how startups used to raise capital. And, and in 2016, early 2016, 17 times, I witnessed, uh, got, got introduced to early ERC20 protocols. Uh, I wrote first checks to a few of them. I had an opportunity to work with uh, early Ethereum ecosystem, and then I it, th then I felt um, this ecosystem and my portfolio really needed to have a strong engineering technology team because to address the concerns around security or uh, to concern the uh, 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 to address the concerns around how uh, scalable and robust a particular technology is, Web three is heavily dependent on builders. Um, so I made a move from London to India because I felt it's a great place to. Uh, build communities which have a ton of builders. Uh, so I come, I, I'm currently sitting in a city called Hyderabad where we had an opportunity to partner with uh, the local government's uh, innovation campus. It, it's massive. It has like uh, some 50 universities or 
2,000 plus startups, and they're all super fascinated about what's happening in Web3. How do we leverage Web3? And, and, and I think what would happen first is we saw crowdfunding and et cetera take off, but what ICOs did was like crowdfunding on steroids. I think that's going to stay. Uh, you are going to, what it did was it put projects across the globe on one platform, which never happened, right? In the past, there was innovation in Silicon Valley at some point, there was innovation in Asian markets at a different point. There was a Delta, there was an opportunity for startups to actually like replicate models from here to here. Uh, but what you're seeing is with crypto, everybody's just on one platform. You can raise capital from anyone anywhere in the world. And you suddenly, as an entrepreneur, you don't come from a um, society of scarcity, which you are often as a founder, but you suddenly come from a society of abundance of capital in Web3. Uh, li like, uh, like my fellow panelists mentioned, the amount of capital available in the early stage is massive. And, and we, I personally am a, a huge optimist. I don't know where the next big protocol can come from. You know, uh, it can be a young college kid uh, understanding Web3 and coming up. We are, we are re really at the earliest stage of Web3, right? So anything can happen from now on. We're seeing disruption, not only in the back end, slowly we're seeing with games um, and going to metaverse, right? So I think as our digital lives start becoming more and more valuable, I think what Web3 has done very well is first it created the back end for metaverse. Uh, one, because I personally feel, feel metaverse is not just one game or one world, but it's actually what we're going to build in the future. But Web3 became a very interesting back end revolution for it. It set the stage for it. Um, and and uh, I feel as it, it will also change the business models now, apart from infrastructure. Because the infrastructure is already there, we are like good decade into the infrastructure. Now we are seeing new Web3 net business models, which were never possible pre-Web3. Like I, I couldn't even think of um, how play to earn at an internet scale can work uh, without having something like a token, uh, right? So, so with this, I think you will see our digital lives getting more valuable. You can start earning online, earning on Web3, and, and that can pave the way for eventually spending more time in virtual worlds. Um, I, th I think the financial economic stack and that revolution kicks in way before our front end revolution for metaverses because we are still a long, long time away from the experiences we're all promising or we're all expecting from metaverse, watching various metaverse movies. But I think that's going to take a little while. That's my perspective. But the revolution will come from economic, fundraise, entrepreneurial, community, um, and creator economy. I am super bullish on creator economy because, you know, um, eventually I think every, every, we're going in a direction where every single one of us is going to be a creator. We're creating either content or we're creating value, we're creating applications, we're, we're creating connections, communities. So it's a very interesting uh, opportunity to see how they would come into Web3. Right? That, that's what I'm currently focusing on, but would love to um, understand more opinions of my um, yeah, just wanna, you know, add a, you know, yeah, I just want to add one sentence real quick. I, I agree 100 percent. And um, as I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, and we were jokingly, you know, uh, uh, you know, making comments about Web 2 and Web 3. And we said, you know, back in Web, Web 2.0 era, well, projects had no capital, but they have a lot of users. And in, in Web 3.0, you know, it's abundant in, in, in capital, but there is no users. And, and that's how early we are still. <laughs> very good so for the good sake of time because uh, we are, have just five minutes left so um, I would like to uh, go a bit more looking about the future where some of you already touched it and then reply to a question from the audience in particular uh, so how are we going to see in the future about the 3.0 so Satoshi so was mentioning uh, about uh, that is uh, an opportunity for each of us to become a sort of entrepreneurial way of uh, creating content and, and services. Uh, uh, now, taking from that, so this using about this tokenization, this token about utility token, so using the token, uh, how this will change our life and uh, how this will be embedded into the metaverse. Uh, uh, you know, yeah, there are two realities that will be, uh, to make it very simple. One, there will be this uh, virtual reality that will be complete by this metaverse where basically we have a parallel world 
like the movie Avatar that we remember, and uh, and, and and the real reality. So uh, uh, for me, uh, it would be uh, interesting to see how you know the two things would progress together because. Uh, uh, you know, people have a physical life at the end of the days, and uh, uh, how you know they will be more living, you know, a virtual life than than, than, than you know a physical life. That's uh, for some people be even better because you know uh, just about looking about you know appearance uh, or age or whatever you can uh, be another person or be whatever you want into the metaverse. Uh, so that is very attractive, but, uh, uh, this was psychologically will have a strong impact, uh, as I'm always saying, but, uh, how we will cope with this, uh, for sure. One thing I'm sure on my side that we are approaching a new uh, order, maybe not what the reality is saying, but, uh, Really, uh, also due to this war, we see the shift, the um, uh, swift payment systems and many others. We are approaching the dollar also. This is not the contest, but we are seeing the dollar is not anymore the, the currency. Yen, I'm not sure that this will be a, a correct replacement. What I see crypto as a currency could be potentially the real new order, in my view. Maybe it's just my, my personal view, but I have got a strong feeling on that. So now uh, I'll give you uh, immediately the floor. So uh, in order, Sirakar, please make your, your, your comment on this. Yeah, just quickly, I wanted to say we have another 17 minutes left, uh, David, not two okay, minutes. Sorry. So, so I mean, <laughs> we okay. can end. Right. Very good. Yeah. Very, good. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Very <laughs> good. <laughs> We can take our time too if you want to. Okay. okay. So, yeah, so I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, I mean, defining the future for, uh, uh, you know, these industries is almost like writing, I guess, science fiction. You know, I mean, you know, I think everybody can create and imagine what this could be and how it will this work and how will people use it and how much time they spend in the real world and how much time they spend in the digital digital world and what they do in these respective worlds and which world is better than the other. I mean, these are all like very philosophical and, you know, I don't even know. But yeah, I think what I would like to really also, you know, I, and, I, and, and, you know, make a point is end of the day, I think, you know, uh, 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 the, you know, the digital divide uh, with Web 2.0 itself was fairly significant. And, and the way I'm seeing Web 3.0, I think, looks like the divide will get further unless you get uh you know you get everybody who have, who have really been you know already left out uh into this whole whatever this whole thing is and, and make it more meaningful right out of the small indian farmer you know get some benefit out of this you know all that kind of stuff i think i, I think people need to also look at this otherwise it can become you know something which is really for highly intelligent and, uh, you know, people who are technologically extremely savvy and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then we'll really have two worlds. We'll have the real world and then we'll have the metaverse world for the very, very smart, intelligent people. Now it's, I guess, up to everybody after that, how they want to look at it. But so, I, and that's what I, I always keep thinking about, you know, how, how do you get everybody into the mainstream? How can you make these technologies get people in and uh, still a whole a lot of world still lives in fairly extreme poverty and all that kind of stuff, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and there are, I think, obviously ways, I know there's the, there's an initiative by the Indian government on open, open networks, uh, with some kind of a web 3.0 implementation, but almost like disintermediating something like Amazon, uh, you know, so, and making, you know, everybody participate in the whole, uh, network, uh, I, I mean, but it's still not through tokens or whatever, but still, I mean, the concept is, you know, how do you get, you know, people to create this stuff and they can all engage with each other without any intermediary kind of stuff. Um, I would also call it some kind of a web 3.0 implementation, but that's, yeah, that's the way I look at it. I mean, but yeah, otherwise, I guess the art of technology and, you know, and the possibility of technologies and ability of smart people to do something with it is, is endless, right? So, I mean, you know, I mean, the future is what we write and what we define and what we create. Okay, so, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess a large part of my time in the past five to six years being in the industry um, has been spent on uh, convincing people to join the industry, right? And, and you know, try to pick a, paint a very pink blueprint um, uh, about the uh, the future of crypto and Web 3.0. But uh, today, I'd like to offer some, you know, some some of my two cents and 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 trying to uh, offer offer several contrarian view. Um, and, and you know, uh, I mean, the rest of you guys can also probably uh, paint a, a a a brighter picture. But uh, you know, because I have been in the industry for some time, and I I've been uh, you know builder and, and an investor, so I've seen some details that uh, that that could you know hide some devils, right? Um, but uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, for example, right? The, the, there are many things that needs to be solved before we reach our our, our utopia, right? So I mean, for example, one. When a project raises uh, 20 million, 50 million dollars so easily from the website, you know how how can you make sure that they are responsible uh, for fund raised? How how to make sure that they stay on track to to build according to the the roadmap that they painted and and they promised to the uh, individual investors mainly. Um, I mean, even though you know there are a lot of institutional investors right now for projects, but still you know a lot of uh, uh, funds are, are are raised out of uh, or, or from the indi- uh, from the individual investors. So so that you know is one thing. How to hold the teams accountable? How to make the funds more transparent in terms of where they're used, right? And one and, and two. Um, so one thing that I, I I personally feel most pumped about um, you know about Web 3.0 and, and the future of crypto is that it fundamentally changes how people partner uh, and, and and work together. Around the whole world, without borders, without the limitation of you know, physical borders, and um, you know, foreign foreign currency exchange, right? It, it really decreases the efficiency. But when we talk about DAO or decentralized um, or autonomous organization, it seems like we we don't know what we're talking about what we are talking about, right? Um, nobody knows what you know where DAO will be headed to eventually, right? Or how will people you know, work in the mo- in the most efficient way, while work de- decentralized, distributed, and you know, be incentivized with a whole healthy token ecos- uh, a t- token system, right? I mean, yes, GitHub and the, and the likes of GitHub have experimented the uh, model of working distributed, um, but what if there's a token component to it, and uh, there's no actual legal entity anywhere? Uh, or at least the legal entity in the form that we know it, right? Um, so that needs to be solved, right? Where will DAO be, you know, eventually developed into? And then two, uh, and, and three, right? The likes, uh, I mean, the rise of X Infinity and Step N are great, right? X Infinity has, has offered uh, the players and users in especially Southeast Asia during pandemic where, you know, hundreds of, well, if not thousands of factories laid out their workers a steady source of income to make a living, and Step N right has in, has incentivized its users around the whole world. I mean, I was in Turkey last month, and I was uh, in, in this you know breakfast bar, and I pulled out my iPhone and opened Step N, uh, and, and 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 was looking at uh, w- w- one of the um, sneakers that I got, and 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 the waiter came by, t- talked to me in in, in 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 poor English, saying, "I I got one of those too, and, and I got a higher level." So that's how how popular that game is, and so what you know, Step N does is essentially a move to earn um, uh, model, right? Uh, it incentivizes you to run or walk or to jog, right, uh, and offer you um, their token as their word. But the the question for me is, right, how long or how sustainable can this model be, right? I mean, that there's an uh, that there's ups and downs in, in the market, and we're it seems like that we that that, that we are in somewhat bear market right now. I mean, I, I've been through two cycles. I don't call this bear market, but essentially, I, I mean, I, I mean, ultimately people are very bearish, right? Uh, VCs are pausing their investment, uh, you know, founders. It's a bad are- situation because we are worse than 2008, uh, the financial crisis. And it was uh, the conference uh, two days ago, the head of a business school at uh, Cambridge and was mentioning you make a parallel. And, and, and uh, now I don't remember the, the figures on top of my head, but it was more than 30% more lost in terms of capitalization than what was yes. uh, at the peak of the, of the 2008. So, but as you said, still people are very bullish because uh, you know everybody's speaking about uh, 
metaverse nft web3 yep. and uh, yeah 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 i mean the the the, the impact is is far it is more far reach than just crypto right it, it it's macro level and, and we're in a recession right now um, that's no doubt um so um my my final thoughts about uh, stefan right uh, or the likes of stefan is that you know how do you make sure that uh, the tokenomics is time tested right i mean it could work in half a year it could work in a year and everybody can be happy when they are making money when the you know, token price goes up you know, in, 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 in perpetuity, but nothing goes up in perpetuity, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but it, you know, it, 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 it can only be, t- you know, tell from, uh, you know, by time, right? I, I mean, time will, time will tell, only time will tell uh, whether the tokenomics sure. is sustainable. Um, and when, when the music stops, all right, will people lose money? And when people lose money, is that the part of money that they can afford to lose or is that, is that their life savings? That's, you know, these are all the problems that we face. And it's not until that we solve these issues can we see the uh, mass adoption or the real mass adoption of, uh, of crypto and Web 3.0. And I, and I agree uh, 100% with uh, Sen- Santosh, you know, what you just said about GameFi or, uh, or, or or social token or fan token or NFT is going to be the top of the funnel when we attract, you know, the, the, the people outside of crypto, which represents only probably less than 1% of the um, population right now into this fascinating world and into this fascinating rabbit hole. Uh, but the difference will be, you know, they will probably not feel what's you know behind or underneath um, the app that, that we're using, right? Um, or that they're using. Um, there will be no like, you know, private keys. There will be no MetaMask, you know, complicated uh, interfaces. Um, so, you know, that's another thing, right? User interaction and user experience and that, that needs to be improved um, by a lot before we can see that happen. So, Tosh? Yeah, definitely. I, I think uh, since Yemu brought up uh, the pay to earn and move to earn like models, I'm, I'm quite bullish on on this, so in this decade, when I actually uh, felt I want to make a move from managing a portfolio to running uh, my own things, I, I I felt as an early adopter of crypto, like uh, uh, and Web three, I felt uh, it's a great opportunity to build things for mass adoption, uh, for simplifying the complexity of uh, what we created since the last few years as as an as an ecosystem, um, and I felt, uh, yeah, I mean. Um, I started off, that's what we built at Autonomy. We built uh, infrastructure and the challenges we had is how do we abstract the complexity of what a non-custodial wallet is. However, not just go down the custodial wallet path because uh, staying true to the vision of not your keys, not your money, but still providing uh, experiences uh, which are as close to simplicity of Web2 as possible for a user. Uh, Like Yemu mentioned, I think the key is to uh, build blockchain Web3 products in a way where uh, you don't have to feel different about crypto. You don't have to go through the hassles of uh, going to different places, having this experience broken. You will see uh, a ri- the rise of new wave of startups because in the past, you, crypto always goes in cycles. So we had layer one revolutions and we, we still have layer ones coming even at this point. Uh, we had DeFi protocols coming and still have more exciting DeFi protocols coming. Of course, we fail, we learn, we make uh, better better protocols moving forward. But uh, this this decade, I think, or this, not even a decade, I think next few years, I think you're going to see uh, massive mass adoption because games have already come in. Uh, we're also going to see Web3 social. I think social and gaming, I think, are two really exciting spaces to integrate backend blockchain tokens in a, in a way where it's fun, I think. I think uh, that's that's what I'm looking forward to, for Web3 to be more fun, engaging, um, and having the ability to monetize there. I think that's, that's another important part. So when we talk about Metaverse, uh, I think about it in two parts. I think the backend for Metaverse um, already exists in a way. I mean, we are, we are I mean, just, just take the philosophy of digital lives being more valuable than physical lives. I, I, I think if you take internet away from me, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll probably be a very sucky, non-internet, uh, you know, you know, job job seeker or something. But but in, internet gave us that opportunity, right? So we, we are in a way already are 
my digital life at least is more valuable already than what I can do without it. Um, and, and Metaverse backend can eventually take cues from there, um, take the play to earn, uh, you know, move to earn kind of models in there. But the other part of challenge is how do we build the uh, front end of it, right? In a, in a more intuitive, fun way. I think this is where most crypto games uh, are still not up there. They're not great as games, uh, but they're they're definitely having all this play to earn mechanics, etc. Um, I, I think open metaverse, uh, if internet was a game, I, I feel that would be an open metaverse. Uh, we still have to, we still have the opportunity to innovate ground up from experiences, right? So today your mind is already tuned to saying, okay, I want to see a wallet. You already think about a wallet symbol somewhere you've already experienced, but now is an opportunity for us to rethink all of this, right? Maybe moving my cursor, moving my mouse from a place and clicking on a wallet and sending money to somebody's wallet is probably a boring interface. Maybe there's an opportunity for people to, let's say, let's say send money from in, in, a, in a different interface, right? So, so that's where I think innovation still has to come in. Uh, standards have to come in, how people design different experiences, interoperability. I think we're quite far for something like that. But I see, I see revolution from capital point of view, innovation. So it's a great time to build. I feel most of my friends ask me, how do I get into crypto? How do I trade? I, I, I never thought about all of that because I came into crypto as a contrib- contributor. Uh, I, I, I build stuff. So, so I feel building or contributing to a project is also very exciting on the other side um, and building products for mass adoption. Um, yeah, excited for where that's going to go. Santosh, just to connect you and also what uh, Yemo was saying before, uh, and also the question from one of our audience. Uh, and we see, uh, they said about the rising of the uh, play to earn uh, market, uh, uh, P2E market, so the play to earn game. So uh, this is what uh, both of you touch uh, uh, briefly. And, and, and this is something that will make the metaverse uh, something more appealing also uh, about what uh, also Sirakara was saying at the beginning. So to sort of the engaging uh, also not only uh, tech j- jigs, but also normal people. So as, as uh, Yem was saying, and he was in the pub and, and the lady was also playing this game because he's earning money with that. So that is something that the Metaverse can uh, engage a different type of audience. So if I play, I earn. Uh, then it's a matter to see how you cash in the, your crypto, crypto uh, uh, currency uh, and, and how this will be, you know, tax and legal. We know the, the implications, but certainly uh, it will be something to, to think about uh, as, um, as one big driver of, of, of going into metaverse. Just last, uh, if we have last minutes, uh, just a quick uh, uh, reply from all of you. Sure. Um, I, I can probably, you know, give a quick comment about this. Uh, I, I think it's important for P2E games or P2E model or similar model um, applications to create a positive externality to create value. Otherwise, it's, it's, it's going to be just a zero-sum game. Why do I say that, right? I mean, if you regard uh, the likes of X Infinity as uh, P2E 1.0, I like to call it that, uh, and and likes of uh, uh, Stepan as, uh, you know, P2E 2.0, um, because, you know, um, at the end of the day, uh, the players of X Infinity now are just uh, playing for playing sake. They're, 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 they're contributing their time and energy and attention and, and, and labor to make cryptocurrencies as their income. And, and there is very little joy that's coming out of it. Right. I mean, for, 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 for step N, it's a bit, you know, different in the sense that you are running, you are at least exercising. Um, but. Or yes, you're 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 making money, and yes, you're earning GST or or GMT or whatever that is. But you have to you you have to think about where does the value come from, right? Where who is paying for for, for the bill? Um, it, it, it's the individual investors and the student investor who are buying GST or GMT from the secondary market from exchanges that are paying for you. So how how long can can that game last? Uh, that is also my question, right? Um, so. The builders, or, or, or us as the builders, right, need to think about or to design the tokenomics very carefully 
to you know to think not only one one year but three or five or ten years down the road how this game is going to play out how uh, how many you know, different variances and uh, scenarios there will be uh, to to protect the interest of all players and all participants in the whole ecosystem. Thank you. Yeah, just Did just to add to that, I I think um, uh, yeah I agree I agree with that because all these uh, edge to earn models are still very early uh, need to test it. Um, uh, their sustainability is arguable as most of their sustainability today is from trading on secondary markets. Uh, but it's exciting to see uh, how these models will build up. I think system design, token tokenomic design is a very important field for such such models and. Failure of that can lead to the network uh, actually going uh, going down to zero, like uh, some of these uh, initial examples we took here. Um, I'm, I'm I'm currently working on a couple of such models. So uh, at, at uh, Autonomy, we're working on something around a create to earn kind of model. Um, and and at, at Exonite, we've already launched a watch to earn model, which is a little more sustainable where uh, you have advertising revenue and brands already used to paying advertising revenue. We as a decentralized network offer an opportunity for uh, viewers to actually have a skin in the game in that particular revenue making piece. So uh, I think that's how the economic designs have to be evolved. Where, where is this earn coming from? If you're earning something, what is the inflow of economic value? Um, and, and for example, for games, people can always argue, if I was playing a game uh, and I bought an asset, I won an asset, uh, once I quit the game, I don't have the ability to port the value of that particular asset, or I must have paid, uh, I must have played 80 odd hours or 100 odd hours for a game, but uh, what happens when I move on? Is, is all of this economic, all of this value I accumulated, is it equal to zero, or can there be a secondary market for it? Can somebody else pay value for these items which I actually own? Can I take them outside? I think these are these are all interesting things to look at. I think that ownership is what um, can be tied to the earn kind of model. You're earning ownership, but does that ownership mean anything for you? Is it going to give you economic benefits over long term? If yes, how is it going to give give it? End of the day, I think play to earn or X to earn or or any other crypto network boils down to three uh, fundamentals to me. Uh, you need to have a product which people want to use. You need to have a business model that's sustainable over long term. Uh, you need to have a token tokenomic model which can give network effects to one and two. I think the third part is unique to Web3 startups. Uh, Web2 startups had to deal with one and two. But at Web3 startups, you have another uh, challenging factor to deal with. That is, how do you model your tokenomics, build a community, uh, and another challenge with all Web3 communities is everybody is driven by when Moon. Uh, I think, sure, there's, there's going to be a day for, for Moon for a project, but only if it accumulates value. So uh, the, the challenge of navigating a community which is only economically aligned is, a, is another interesting uh, parameter to consider on how good products will come in. If you keep on having communities which are distracting builders um, around just price, point of view, because price is temporary. You can never assess the fair market uh, value of a particular technology just by a stock which is trading on the market. So so it's interesting to see how communities will evolve, mature, and actually participate, contribute, build, rather than um, just sit back and expect a core team to just uh, take the token price up and drive uh, financial value. Yeah, I feel uh, you can only expect to derive value if you can add value to a system. Um, I feel that's that's an important motto for Web3. Okay. I believe the last, last word is yours, Siraka. Yeah, thank you, David. No, it's been a very interesting conversation. I think, uh, you know, I mean, uh, as somebody said, it's uh, still evolving. It's nascent, obviously, infrastructure, the underlying things are still getting designed, built, and the whole discussion around what are the business models, economic models, you know, uh, and uh, I guess, uh, in the, I think the opportunity is all ahead of us, uh, and uh, it all looks like, you know, extremely, uh, you know, exciting, but, but, but yeah, I guess uh, there's a lot of things which need to be, I mean, looked at, I would say, uh, as all these evolve as we go forward. 
Okay, so thank you very much. I think uh, our time is over already for a little while. So it was uh, for me a pleasure to moderate this fantastic panel. And I uh, uh, hope we catch up in the future again and to develop this interesting uh, segment uh, that is very attractive. And uh, hopefully we will all contribute to that, as Satosh was saying before. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening or morning. It depends where you're located. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. All the best. Bye. Bye.